don't overestimate yourself, but don't underestimate who you could be. That's a much better way of thinking about it. You know, psychologists of the careless sort, I would say, have been pushing the idea of self-esteem for a very long time, probably since the early 60s. You should be content with yourself the way you are. It's like, no, you shouldn't. Seriously, like, you're nowhere near what you could be. You're not even close. Right, and so that's a, that's a way more optimistic message. Like it's, you ain't seen nothing yet. That's the right message. And so I would say, don't overestimate yourself now, but don't underestimate your future self. And you have so much influence as an individual if you get your act together that you can't believe it. There isn't anything that has more influence than that. You have all the power that there is right where you are to put things right around you. You start now, you develop a noble vision, right, of who you could be. You start to put that into practice, develop some discipline, familiarize yourself with the great works of the past. Learn to read, learn to write, learn to speak, learn to think. Man, you'll be deadly. What you could bring to the table that hasn't been brought to the table for years is an emphasis on individual responsibility. And the, the right way to do that, as far as I'm concerned, is to start with yourselves, is develop a vision for your life. You start to think about, if you could be who you could be, what would that look like? That's the beginning of a mature philosophy of being. If you could be the person that you would admire, who would that person be? How would you configure yourself? How would you configure your career, your education, your family? Your, your the use of time outside of work. If you wanted to be the noblest person that you could be who was adopting the maximal amount of responsibility, how would that look? Then you need a strategy to put that into place. And that's the way you change things properly and also the way you do the least amount of harm while you're changing them. And so it should be an individual, an individual focused set of ideas and that way you can sidestep the identity politics traps and that would be a very good thing. And I think a modern conservatism, which isn't really all that distinguishable from a classical liberalism as it turns out, is to put tremendous stress on the responsibility of the individual. And one of the things that's wonderful about that, as far as I'm concerned, and I made reference to this a few minutes ago, is that you need a meaning to offset the tragedy of life. Otherwise, you just suffer stupidly, and you tend to make people around you suffer the same way. The way that you find that meaning is by adopting as much responsibility as you can. And what's also so fascinating about that is, you know, you, you're, you're characterized by an indefinite potential. And it isn't easy to understand exactly what that is, that potential, but you know, it's what people call you on when they say, you know, you're not living up to your potential, whatever that is. That potential will be called forth from you as a consequence of adoption of responsibility because it won't manifest itself unless you take on a load. You're not going to develop in all the ways you could develop unless you set yourself a serious challenge because it takes the challenge to pull that out of you and also to motivate you to rid yourself of all the weaknesses and, and personality flaws that you've accumulated across the years and to let those disappear and burn off you. You, you need to load yourself up before the demands of life will be such that you will discipline yourself properly. And a, a noble goal is a very good way of, of beginning that. The truth of the matter is, as far as I'm concerned, that each of us has enough potential character, power of character, let's say, if it's properly manifested, to contend with that in a noble way and to rise above it and to transcend and, and to deal with it in, in large part because we can make the world a much better place than it is for each of us individually and for our families and for our community and we can constrain the malevolence, at least in our own hearts, and, and perhaps have a positive effect on those around us as a consequence, and that actually does make things better, and we actually can do that, and that's where the meaning in life is to be found. And that meaning, you know, that goes along with the adoption of that kind of responsibility is actually the antidote to the suffering. You know that perfectly well, because all of you need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, especially on a rough morning, you know, when things aren't going so well in your life. And there will be plenty of times when things aren't going so well in your life. And you still need a reason to get up and get moving and get out there. And if you have adopted the responsibility at an individual level to make things better, given how bad they are, if you've adopted the responsibility to make things better, then you have a reason to get up. And so one of the things that I've been stressing to people is that 
There's very little difference between the meaning in life that gives you fulfillment and that engages you in existence and the willingness to shoulder as much individual responsibility as you can possibly handle. Those are the same things. And that's a really useful thing to know. And you kind of know this, right? Everybody knows this because first of all, if you're not living up to your responsibilities, even to take care of yourself, the probability that you're going to be ashamed of that at some level is extraordinarily high. And so your own soul tells you that you're in error, so to speak. But also if you look at who you spontaneously admire, which is a good indication of where, where your value system really sits, you'll see that the people you admire are always people who take responsibility for themselves and responsibility for their family and responsibility for their community. Get your act together. You've got things to do in the world. The absence of your full being in the world leaves a hole that that is filled by terrible things, at minimum. So at minimum, you have an ethical responsibility to ensure that the world doesn't devolve into something approximating hell. And at maximum, you have the responsibility, again, the ethical, and it's a heavy ethical responsibility, to do everything that's in your power to make things as good as you can possibly make them in this sophisticated manner that takes you and your family and your community into account. And it's on you, right? And that's meaning, you know, people say, well, I'd like to have a meaningful life. It's like, well, fair enough. But the, the price that you pay for the meaning that transcends tragedy is the adoption of responsibility for the catastrophe of existence. But that ennobles you, right? It makes you into someone strong and someone competent and someone who, who's worthwhile and who lives in a manner that justifies their own suffering. And that's what, there's nothing better than you could possibly do than that.